If you, like Janet Jackson, have been wondering what we've done for you lately, we'd like to give you a copy of our newest resource, Christian Liberty, disagreeing on issues of the conscience. You can get your free copy at wretched.org slash liberty. James calls you and he calls me an adulterer when we desire something, a perfectly good thing. Let's say knowledge. I want more knowledge about the Bible. But James says if that desire, that good desire, is elevated too high, it brings God down. It turns your good object of desire into an idol and therefore you are an adulterer. James is shocked that we would do this and we should be too. Stop for a moment. Think about the things that you want. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the nasty stuff. I'm not talking about sex. I'm not talking about pornography, alcohol, drugs. I just need lots of, lots of I want to be rich. Money isn't sinful per se, but a desire to be rich. I'm not talking about those obvious things. I'm talking about good things. I want to be a good parent. I'd like a loving spouse. I want a peaceable home. You say, how could those things possibly become an idol? I am going to have a peaceable home or I'll kill all of these people because I'm going to have that peaceable home. That's what James says we do. We can take something that's sinful and desire it a lot. That also is idolatry and adultery. But the tricky part for us is when we desire something good, we don't get it, so we murder one another. You say, I'm not sure this applies to me. I'm, I'm going to just, well, if I, were, if I weren't a Christian, I'd bet, but I'm not going to because, well, that'd be a sin, but I'm just guessing this applies to all of us. James chapter 4, verse 1, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? James, again, smack. Why do you fight? Why are you always in arguments with one another? It's because you want stuff. You've got passions, and I'm going to have them. And the tricky part is it's not when they're the bad things. We see that, and we get that, and we go, oh, I need to mortify that. The, the greater challenge, I think, is when it's something good. I just want well-behaved kids. I want my kids to do well in school. I want my kids to get the scholarship. Those are perfectly fine things, and nobody is suggesting you give up those nice wants. But when those nice wants become needs, we go to war. James keeps on thumping. James chapter 4, verse 2, you desire, you don't have, so you murder. You covet, cannot obtain, so you fight, you quarrel, you go to war, you don't have because you don't ask. We are willing to wage war because we don't get what we think we need. We're nasty, mean, we're not loving, we're not charitable the way that we should be because I want something. I want you to be thinking about, if you'd be so kind as we take this drubbing from James, your kids. Think about your kids. What do you want from your kids? What do you want them to be doing? What do you want them to be like? Because we're going to see that those good things that you want for them and even from them can be a very huge source of contention and heartbreak for you. James chapter 4 verse 3, you ask and don't receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. In other words, all about me. This is what I need. I'm going to have this. Everything else gone. I'm going to get this. And James says, well, then prepare for battle because you're going to go to war and you're going to murder people to get what you idolize. He keeps going. Uh, chapter 4, verse 4, you adulterous people. He's shocked. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You adulterer. I've heard that language before. God uses it in Jeremiah when he describes the people from the tribes of Judah. He, 
the children of Israel, they were adulterers, and you're acting the same way. Look at everything that God has done for you. He dressed you up. He made you beautiful, and you went gulp a whoring, you adulterers. And that's the same language that James uses for us. And this is where it gets far more profound than any self-help book. James now is going to help us understand what's going on in there and what God is after. He calls us adulterers because we have idols. Even if they're good, they're elevated too high. What's God driving at here? Just like with the children of Israel who came out of Egypt, Moses has gone up the mountain for 40 days, and near the end of that time, the people start going, so where's Moses? Where's the, well, Aaron, make us an idol. So what they did, they took off all their jewelry, they threw it into the fire, and Aaron, with a preposterous defense of his wicked activity, said, well, Moses, uh, we just put the, uh, we put the gold in there, and this, uh, this, uh, this calf popped out, <laughs> kooky and they worshipped it. Now remember, they weren't worshipping the calf per se, they were worshipping God, but using this image, strictly verboten in the first and second commandments. Their hearts had gone astray, they went a-wandering. What does God say? I'm a jealous God. I want your affection. It isn't a sinful jealousy, it's a right jealousy, just like the jealousy you have for the affections of your spouse. God is saying, you adulterer, you're giving your affection to the wrong thing. I want, I demand your affection. And when you are desiring something, whether it's a golden calf or well-behaved children, more than you want me, you're an adulterer, you're an idolater. I want your affection. And James echoes that sentiment found back in the book of Exodus, verse 5. Do you suppose it is no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? Whether it's the Holy Spirit or our own spirit, the result is the same. God wants us holy. God jealously yearns that we will have our affections given wholly to him. Now, does that mean that you don't, don't want kids? You don't want them well-behaved? It doesn't mean that. It means what God wants is he wants your primary affection. He wants you to be satisfied totally in him. You can have these other desires, but I want you to give me your whole heart. Otherwise, you're an adulterer.